tonight we're going to continue with uh, seven things the Lord hates, and tonight we are looking at hands that shed innocent blood. Again, in Proverbs 6, verse 16 through 19, it says, These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. So we've looked at the proud look or haughty eyes, we've looked at a lying tongue, and we've noticed that those things are connected together. When you have pride, you believe that you deserve whatever you want, uh, that you are more important than others, and so you are willing to tell lies to get what you want. Uh, So tonight we're looking at these hands that shed innocent blood. Uh, Well, it's talking about murder, isn't it? And that that's a term that we're pretty familiar with. Uh, so one of the things that's very helpful is to see that murder is not killing just in general, but it is killing the innocent. So executing those that are deserving of death is not murder. Uh, even killing in war, uh, as we, we've seen in the Old Testament, was not murder. But Killing the innocent, those that uh, simply were were righteous, who were behaving themselves properly, and yet they are put to death as if they are criminals, uh, it is sinful. And we, we see some of this uh, all through the Bible, but one of the passages that tells us this is in James 2.11, where he says, For he who said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Uh, His point being that this is one of the things God has commanded. If you break that, you are a sinner. And so murder is clearly sin. And I think there are not many people in this world that would uh, contest that. But murder is driven by pride. So as we started in this list of the, the haughty eyes or a proud look that led to a lying tongue that leads to murder, hands that shed innocent blood. It's driven by pride. Um, in James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And so he says that the the problem that they had that leads to murder, whether that's physically murdering people or uh, character assassination or whatever this may refer to, but it, murder is uh, something that comes about Uh, because of your own desires that you have. Uh, It is because you want what you want, and you will stop at nothing, basically, to get it. And that is really, really evil. Uh, Murder is also uh, often connected with lying. Uh, In the scriptures, in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus says, "'You are of your father the devil.'" And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Here he talks about the devil as being a murderer, and yet we we don't see uh, in the beginning him striking anyone dead. Uh, what he he did was he told a lie and convinced uh, Eve and through her Adam to commit sin. And so uh, this brought f- spiritual death and uh, ultimately led to physical death as well. Uh, but lies bring about both types of death. You can be a murderer in the sense of killing someone's relationship with God when your lie leads to them committing sin. Uh, it, it also 
uh, can lead to physical death as well, which is not as serious as the spiritual death, and yet, of course, is quite terrible. In Isaiah 59, verse 3, uh, he tells uh, the, the, these uh, people uh, of Judah, For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has muttered perversity. Uh, so he, 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 he makes this connection of hands being defiled with blood and their lips speaking lies. Uh, these, these things go together. It is rare that you will find a murderer who does not also lie. But it is also true that a liar often becomes a murderer through the consequence of the lies that they tell. So it is, uh, these things are very connected together, and they, they go back to pride because it is someone who doesn't care what the consequences to others are as long as they get what they want. In Psalm 5, verse 6, he says, You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors a bloodthirsty and deceitful man. So again, you see, this idea of being bloodthirsty connected with speaking falsehood or being deceitful. These things go together. The, you cannot think that telling lies is harmless. It is a, a way you end up shedding innocent blood. Uh, there is nothing good that is going to come from it. You believe it's going to get you something or you wouldn't do it. It's a selfish, prideful thing. But what ends up happening is the destruction of those that you affect through your lies. In Exodus 23, in verse 7, he says, Keep yourself far from a false matter. Do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. So he, he tells us that uh, a false matter... Uh, and this this seems to be the idea of maybe a court case where uh, there are trumped up charges against someone uh, and you go along with it. Uh, you, you must never, ever do that. It doesn't matter if you like the person, you don't like them. Maybe they are not uh, good people in general, but they are not worthy of death. As far as the law is concerned, you must not kill the innocent uh, and the righteous. He will not just, God will not justify the wicked. Uh, we need to make sure that we are honest in our dealings, that we do not condemn those who are not worthy of being condemned. One special case that we often talk about, and rightly so, when we talk about uh, shedding innocent blood is abortion. Uh, abortion is murder. It's just a special case of murder. That's driven by pride and by lies, just like all murder. Uh, in Psalm 106, verse 38, although these, these passages don't specifically talk about abortion, but they speak to this basic idea. Uh, Psalm 106, verse 38 uh, says, They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. So here we see the idea of the innocent blood being children, these sons and daughters that were sacrificed to idols. Yes, this was after they were born, uh, yet, but it, it really makes no difference whatsoever, whether they're still in uh, the stomach uh, of the mother or have been uh, brought out into the world when you kill them, it makes no difference. It is still a horrible thing. It is shedding innocent blood. In Ezekiel 16, in verses 20 and 21, he says, Moreover, you took your sons and your daughters, whom you bore to me, and these you sacrificed to them to be devoured. Were your acts of harlotry a small matter, that you have slain my children and offered them up? to them by causing them to pass through the fire. So here again, this is the idea of sacrificing their children uh, to the idols. But here we, we notice something about how God speaks of them. 
He does not say you you sacrificed your children. He says you sacrificed my children. Our children, yes, we can say they are our children, but ultimately they are God's children. And that is true before they are born as well as after they are born. They belong to God. It is incredibly prideful. It is incredibly evil to think that because of our own comfort or to to escape some uh, some you know discomfort of people noticing our sin or uh, t- that it will keep me from doing the things that I want if I have a child that we would say I will murder God's child in order to get what I want to have to escape some sort of discomfort for myself. It is incredibly prideful. It is incredibly evil. And you can see that this is truly an abomination to God. Uh, And of course, that is just a special case. Murder is murder, no matter if it's a a child or a grown person. Uh, But innocent blood can mean those that simply do not deserve death as far as the law is concerned. We're not talking about whether people have sinned or not. Uh, We all deserve death in a sense, but that comes from God, not from one another. We do not, uh, but there are certain things that require death. Uh, You know, if someone commits murder, they are to be put to death by other people. Uh, That was a law God gave to Noah. But, uh, of course, that's a civil law, not something we carry out personally. All right, so murder, killing those that do not deserve to die, killing the innocent is sin. It's driven by pride. Uh, And to commit murder, we really have to think that what we want is more important than the other person's life. And can you just imagine how prideful that is? And yet many, many people have that way of thinking that to, to get what they want or to escape you know, some uh, problem, they are willing to kill the innocent because of, of their own pride. They think they're more important than that other person. And murder is often co- connected with lying, perhaps always. Uh, I don't know if, I, I suppose in some way, murder has to always be connected with lying because you have to be deceived in some sense. Uh, to commit murder. So whether you're the one lying or you're believing a lie, uh, it's going to always be connected with a lie. And lying can cause the physical death of people, whether you your lie uh, leads them to do something which gets them killed, or whether your lie about them causes others to hate them and put them to death. Uh, But it can certainly do that. But even worse than that, Lying can cause the spiritual death of people. Uh, Satan has been a liar from the beginning, and he has been a murderer from the beginning. And we we talked about abortion as a special case of shedding innocent blood, which it's still driven by pride, thinking that killing your child or God's child is, you know, that it means you you think your your desires, what you want is more important than that child's life. God certainly doesn't view it that way. You are not more important than that child. Uh, and we must not think of putting ourselves first. That is, that is selfish, it is prideful, it is evil. Abortion is driven by lies uh, as well. You know, people are telling lies all the time about abortion. You see signs saying you can have a safe abortion. There is no such thing as a safe abortion. For one thing, you're going to murder a child. That's not safe for the child in any way. Uh, but it, it even is very dangerous for the one who is having the abortion uh, because there's all kinds of damage that uh, often results from that process. The, it, there's no such thing as a safe abortion. Those things are lies. Uh, But you also have to believe basically the lie that people spread without any reason, right? There's no reason to believe this. But they say the baby's not really a person until the baby's born. Of course, there are some 
who don't seem to think they're a person even after they are born. Uh, but you, you have to believe this lie somehow. Uh, we're, we're something that you, that maybe you just believe that people are not uh, important, that we are simply animals, and so we can choose to do uh, anything. Uh, but, of course, those are lies. If we believe the truth, if we believe what God has said about our children, about life even in the womb, that God chose certain people from the womb, that John the Baptist leapt for joy while in his mother's womb, and all of those things, we can see that God views those that are in the womb just as much people as those who are outside the womb. Uh, the baby is a baby, uh, and we must not think that we can shed innocent blood and get away from it, even if it's legal in our country. Uh, it is still evil. God will judge. It's an abomination to him. It's driven by pride, which is sinful. It's driven by lies, which is sinful. Let's not allow ourselves to be led down that path, but have the humility to believe God, to accept the consequences of our actions, and to, uh, to consider others as more important than ourselves, to speak the truth, to make sure we believe the truth, and to care for the innocent. All right, that's the, the lesson for tonight. Thank you.